Can you shovel your driveway? Mother Nature does that. It's called the sun. <laughs> Sunday <Yeah>. drive. <laughs> Comment, like, subscribe, repeat. Can we please talk about wide receivers? Check that out. What, the pythons? Check that out right there. Yeah, brother. That's, you know what? Yeah. That's, uh. That's my thigh. 21.8% body fat. <laughs> <laughs> Not 1.8, which DK Metcalf has. That's crazy. Like, that's, there's a point where you look at a guy and you just go, you're not going to test clean. <laughs> <laughs> they, they tested him in the middle of the 40. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. DK Metcalf is a fascinating example because I'm going to name a player, right? And you're immediately going to, you're going to, you have forgotten about this player, but I'm going to name a player and you're going to go, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, I know who you're going to say. Who? T.O.? No. Shannon Sharp? Nope. Continue. David Boston. Ah! Remember David Boston? David Boston looked like an absolute for the monster. Cardinals and Chargers, correct? Monster. Yeah. He is a. He was. He was huge. a freak. He was, he was huge. Freak. He was. He was DK Metcalf big, right? As David Boston mm. looked massive, and he was massive. He was, and teams were enamored with him. Mm -hmm. They were like, "Oh my god!" But one thing that I have learned about guys that are that big. Right? Is they're often not gonna be able to play every step. Right? They're, they uh, they, they just their bodies aren't built for endurance in most instances. Those are just more muscles to they're, tear. Right. And, 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 and at a speed position. Yeah. Yes. At yes. A speed position. You put that much weight and that much speed on the joints, the lower joints and limbs. So that's that's no no bueno. Right. Doesn't happen. Absolute genetic freak. Mm -hmm. Nobody's gonna die that. Now, people could uh, compare it. Like, I just, the two guys I came up with. Yeah. Sharp and Owens. Could yeah, be. Huge. Two Hall of Fame players. Could he be that? Who, who knows? I'm not seeing, like, people are just getting blinded by the shiny, you know, the shiny object in front of them. They're not, they're not looking at, you know, he's a little sloppy on some of these routes. He didn't play his whole year. You know what I mean? He had a neck injury and then left. He wasn't getting tested. No. You're not playing. You're not getting tested. Right. He is the ultimate example of what happens when you're purely drafting potential. Because on paper, <clears throat> he looks like he could be a one wide receiver for the next 10 years. Wide receiver slash outside linebacker for the next 10 years. <laughs> this isn't 1962 where you're playing both sides. You talk. You talk. You tell me. I have a six foot three, two hundred thirty pound linebacker that's that big that did twenty seven reps on the bench. I'm gonna be excited about that linebacker. Right. I don't care who it is. Could you look up Julio Jones and Megatron draft profiles? Yeah. No. And you're right. It's from a technical standpoint, he simply was a better physical athlete than a lot of people, and that's what you always have to be concerned about when you go into the NFL draft. You're looking at a first round player was. Did he solely depend on his athleticism? And the fact that Metcalf could beat press coverage, you couldn't, here's the thing, you couldn't press Metcalf because he would just throw you like a rag doll and you had to keep a safety over top of him. Mm -hmm. Or he was fast that if you tried if you tried to push him a little bit, he would just run by you. So, I mean, he's a freak athlete, but so is Dorio Green Beckham. If Dorio was. Green Beckham was a first round player if he could keep it together off the field, right? On paper, but he wasn't, he wasn't football smart. Like he didn't, he didn't want to be an elite receiver because he didn't make it a priority. No, yeah. and I don't know about Metcalf. I don't want to speak for the kid, well, but the fact is that there's not enough here telling me that he's a top ten pick. The argument, if I can provide an argument, because we're already making a lot of enemies so far. That's fine. I'm used to that. I'm married. <laughs> With Metcalf, is you want to talk? People be, bring up now pedigree. He's Eric yeah. Metcalf's. Nephew. He's a, yeah, that's right. So he has the pedigree. He's grown up. You think he's grown up within it? So mm -hmm. he knows the intricacies of. So not everything's going to be new to him, mm -hmm. uh, as far as that goes. So 
he may already know how to condition his body and you know, you know right. his uncle might be talking to him and say listen you gotta get in the best shape now mm-hmm. because it's gonna be all downhill for the rest of your career because you're just gonna get beat up more and more mm-hmm. um, as he you know I mean as, as far as the, the physicality of the guy yeah nobody's gonna jam him so no. that, that, that that almost takes that off the, the table unless you have a corner that's just as physical as he is which is fine um, so it, if, it's, if that's off the table then he's able to get into certain routes faster. Mm-hmm. Now, how does he read routes? That's what I want to know. I mean, because if you're just throwing a guy off you and then you're wide open, it doesn't help you very much. Yeah. If he allows you to get off the line and you got to beat him to a spot, can you beat him to a spot? Well, that's my only... Plays at Ole Miss? What was his wonder like? Come on, his first name is two letters. Hard for me to fill out the paper. You get five points just putting your name on the top of the <laughs> this this stat is brought to you by Tim Hortons, who always messes up our order. That's right. Did you guys know that Calvin Benjamin had a seven wonderlick? A useless player and a useless test. I who was drafted know. by Bean <laughs> and Gettleman. Maybe his dreads were a Don't little do too it again. Maybe, maybe his dreads were a little too tight. Maybe he went to Florida State. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Here's the thing yes, about Matt Cap that bothers me a little bit. You brought up his pedigree, and that's a great point. Mm-hmm. So the finer details, I would expect him to already understand. The fact that he doesn't... In the game me, or off the field? In, in, in game. Off. I, okay, yeah, in, game. in, in right. game. The fact that he isn't real tight with his routes bothers me a little bit because that should be something that should be ingrained in him at this point. So either... He's just been a better athlete, and he's just simply been relying on that. And the thing about the NFL is you can be a great athlete in college, and you'll beat the you know, the not-so-great athlete on the other side of you. But in the NFL, they're all as good athletes as you yeah. are. So what ends up happening, right, is because of his pedigree, I want to see him roll down from the top of a row. I want to see him not decelerate while looking for a ball in the air because that that's the one that's one trait about a wide receiver that scares the absolute hell out of me is when they're looking for a ball and their stride gets real long for two or three strides and then they pick back up again. That scares the hell out of me because that, you're losing ground. And an NFL corner, you just gave him that ground that you took away. Yeah. You know, if you got two steps on him at you know within the first 10 yards and now you're tracking a ball and you're running like you're on one of those gazelle machines from the infomercials in 1997, then you you just gave up that ground. You always go in the as seen on TV store. Hey, the listen, mall, and the you... mullets were phenomenal in those commercials. <laughs> that's what that's what scares me a lot about DK is that either he thinks he already knows this stuff, right? Yeah. Or he simply has been relying on his athleticism this whole time. And again, you get to the NFL and that scares me a little bit. And I, I'm only, my, my concern about DK Metcalf, if we were sitting at 18, 22, you want to take Metcalf, I'm fine with it. Go ahead. Go ahead. How about 16? You gotta, I'm, I'd be okay with it. But you're talking about a top 10 pick. You're talking about the capital you could get from that pick. I look at what would Metcalf bring to the table versus what could you get for that pick from somebody else. And in the top 10, I'm I'm out on Metcalf. But it, again, we're at 16, we're at 20, we're at 24, we're somewhere in that vicinity. Yep. I I would that's a, I would take the chance on Metcalf. Ask me why I'm smiling. I have no idea why you're smiling. You know something's coming though, right? I do, yeah. Why are you smiling? Um, I said 16 for a reason. I'm sure you did. Okay. You're telling me about a guy who in college relied on being physically superior to all of his opponents and who was an admitted project, who was probably going to be playing out of position, drafted 16 by the Buffalo Bills. What is the difference, if any, between DK Metcalf and Tremaine Edmonds? What would be the difference? It would be very consistent with this regime to draft DK Metcalf, who is a project, who they want to put in a certain spot. I'll wait. Here's why. Because if the Bills are drafting at 16, they wouldn't have had another first-round pick already. You can make a pick like Edmonds where you did because you already had a first-round pick. You could take the chance. Okay, so what you're saying is that what if they flipped it and they trade back from 9 and they get a 16 and another first? 
Just in some respect. If they get two firsts, they end up two firsts, and they take me Metcalf with their first first round pick. What yeah. makes it different? Yeah, what that's fine. That's yeah, fine. But what, that's the thing. We'll make it would be completely consistent with what this regime has done. And this guy's a project, but he's a he's freak out. Has everything, all the tools. We don't have to coach him up on tools. We need to coach his, We need to coach this up on him. And it took Edmonds eight or nine games to get it. Uh-huh. And he got hurt. But he was a physical specimen. Still is. But, yeah, know, it's, it's, I, it's I a very interesting I'm not, comparison. I'm right? not, in, and I want to make this very clear. Yeah. I'm not in at Metcalf at nine. I'm not. There's too much risk at nine. I'm not in, in, in him at all. Yeah. I don't want him at all. I, Can I, I make that clear? And I'll revert back to this episode if I'm wrong. That's he ends up being awesome. I'm fine with that. That's fine. I don't want him at all. There's too many things that could go wrong that can go right for me. The difference for me is that if you're going to take Metcalf, I'm all right with it. If you've got another first rounder somewhere. Okay. Right? All right. That's fair. I'm, I'm all right with that. Or if you get another first rounder next season and trading that. So, you mean if they trade it with the Raiders? Yeah, for like the twenty fourth, right? Pick. And they got and they next got year's first. first. And That's you, fine. And you drafted him with the twenty fourth. Totally fine. Okay. Because you can write you can write the wrong. Then if something explodes, yeah, you're biting the bullet this season. But he's a rookie running, or he's a rookie wide receiver. You're going to be biting the bullet anyway. These guys take a little while to develop. And the fact that he comes from Old Miss, which is historically a spread system, he's going to develop slow. Like, mm-hmm. that's what gets me a little bit, is we're talking about a spread wide receiver in the top 10. Like, we're talking about spread wide receiver. That's why you look at Alabama, and Alabama wide receivers are always heralded. Well, look at the system they came from. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, it's not here in Buffalo, I can tell you that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even though it got their OC. I, I'd be okay with Metcalf if there's not necessarily a backup plan, but if your whole first round isn't in that, you, all the eggs aren't in that first round basket. I, I can understand that, that thought process. Yeah. I, and I, I can get with that. I, because with Metcalf that. I, just, a, I just don't want him at all. I, I, I get it, but Metcalf does a lot of good things. He does a lot of things that you can't teach. We talk about Zay Jones can't get off the line in press coverage, so yeah. you have to move him to the slot. Don't have to worry about that with Metcalf. What are you he can play do? the outside. What are you going to do? Draft Big Brother? What's he going to do? Keep guys off the line? Well, <laughs> I'm just saying. Do not press Zay. I'm coming. <laughs> like, we complain about some of these facets that Metcalf yeah. are opposite yeah. on, you know? Like, we complain yeah. that Zay doesn't get off the line very well against press coverage. Well, Metcalf won't have that problem. Will Metcalf command over-the-top coverage? Well, unfortunately, you're not going to know that until you put him on an NFL field and see how physical he's really going to be. Mm. How fast is he on the field? Matt Cass how, right. dur- how durable is he? Right. I, he got I don't, hurt. We don't know his eyes. You brought that point up earlier. We don't yeah. know it is how his eyes read coverage. Yeah. We don't know if he's going to understand route concepts. But given his pedigree, you have to assume that he will. Mm. Right? That's why these guys that have a history of family that have played in the NFL, that's why they get a bigger shake than other guys who their families never played in the NFL because they assume that some of these finer details are just intrinsic to these players because they were just exposed yeah, to Yeah, because they, they just know them all. Right. Not, nothing's new to them. Right. Right? Oh, yeah, my uncle told me about this in the draft. Right. Right? You know, I, yeah. you know, so. It's like if you're if both your parents were teachers and you grew up to be a teacher, you you grew up in a household of teachers. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's something that's very intrinsic to who you are. It was built into who you were. So, you know, Metcalf, I think, brings a lot of that. Right. However, um, However, I don't. I don't see enough at nine. I, there's worlds of talent. I would never disagree with that. But there's just for me personally, there's a there's a bit too much risk at nine. So you would take. I would be happier. Let me let me rephrase. Ready? I would be just as happy with DK Metcalf at sixteen plus a first as I would be with. Uh, Keneal, Harry, or, or Sable Whiteside at 27 or 24. Oh, Whiteside. That's what I mean. So I, I'd, be just as, I, I'd be just as happy. But the theory still remains the same. In order for the Bills to take a wide receiver in the first round, they're not taking the nine. Nine is a bit. It's a bit high, right, for the receiver that you want to take. In my opinion, it's, just, it's too much risk. Well, he's got an understanding on how to maintain near fatal amounts of body fat. Um, near fatal amounts of body fat. Um, so. What is this? Concrete? Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah, you know what's going to happen is he's going to walk into an NFL facility and they're going to be like, he's going to walk to the wide receiver room and the strength and conditioning coach is going to grab him and be like, hold on, hold on, you're going to hang out, you're going to hang out with a punter for, for the first couple of weeks. <laughs> We're going to thin you out, homie. Yeah. That's it. Nothing but Pop-Tarts and bagels for you. That's he, all you get. <laughs> he goes into the he goes into the equipment room. The guy hands him number 56. But you're the new DN, right? <laughs>